it's time to jump into the deep end. We're going advanced. Hey everybody, Joe Workman here. And in this video, we're going to be going over some advanced font pro topics. We're going to be going how to inline fonts and how we can subset fonts as well. Cause that a lot of times when you do both of those things together and uh, I have a great use case. So without further ado, without me blabbing, let's go ahead and jump in and see how all of this cool advanced stuff works. So here we are inside rapid weaver. And what we're going to do in this video is learn how to create this header here, this font pro header, as you see, um, it does have some fancy text, right? But there's more to meets the eye here. Because if we edit this header, what you will notice is this isn't font spelled out as font pro, right? We're using some special codes here to produce these extra fancy letters, right? Because this isn't the average T or the average F or an average PRO to be, to be honest, right? So we're going to see how we can utilize some great features of fonts um, to get some really amazing glyphs in here. Okay. Um, then we're going to learn how to actually subset that font and then use an inline font stack to, um, add that to our font pro page. So here we are inside font explorer pro. And what you'll notice is this particular font, when you spell out font pro, this looks much different than what we saw inside rapid weaver, right? We don't have all of those really fancy characters. So if I paste in all those character codes that we saw in rapid weaver, we will then see all of the fancy character glyphs that we really want to use. Now, how do we get this, right? So inside font explorer X, if you double click on a font, you will be able to see all of the available glyphs and characters for a particular font. Now, if you see here, there are a ton of different A characters, right? Not all of these are, you know, the normal A character. There's only one but there are a plethora of extra different ways that we can write an A, B, C, here's a fancy D, right? So there's so many different ways that we can do this, okay? So if we find the F that I wanted to use, which is right here, right? This is the fancy F that I wanted to use. Now, if you look here, we have a character code, which is the character code, the HTML character code that we're gonna wanna use. It's actually down here with a little ampersand, right? So this is the code that I would insert into the HTML instead of an F to get this particular character. Okay, now if I'm loading the entire font family, I have access to this entire library of glyphs. So I can use any of these, okay? And if I wanted to reference a glyph, you just simply copy the HTML character code for that particular glyph, paste it into your content area, and there you have it, okay? Now, this particular font is close to 300 kilobytes, which is pretty large. And really, I'm only using this font to display the header font pro. So why am I gonna load 300 kilobytes a font file for seven characters, right? So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna learn how we can take the character codes and create a subset of this font file, okay? So we're gonna create a subset of this font file that only contains the seven characters that we know we are going to use for this family. Now, in order to subset our font, what I'm gonna use is I'm gonna use a free tool from fontsquirrel.com. Just go to the generator tab, and what you wanna do is you're gonna to wanna to upload your web fonts. It's gonna go here, and I know on my desktop I have the Samantha Bold Italic Pro. So I'm gonna select, this is, again, this is the full font file. As you see, it's 294 kilobytes. I'm gonna say choose and it's gonna now upload that font file for us. 
Now, once it's uploaded, what I'm going to do is we're going to go into expert mode. Okay. Now in expert mode, uh, we want to make sure that let's tweak some settings here. We don't want a WAF2 file. We only want WAF. Um, for true type hinting, I'm going to say keep existing because I just want to keep, I don't want font score to modify my font, right? Um, I don't want it to fix anything. I don't want it to make any adjustments. I don't want it to fix any spaces or hyphens. I don't want it to adjust the X height. Um, and here we are now into the subsetting features. And what we're going to do is we're going to set up custom subsetting. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down to the character subsetting because we want to subset only the characters that we want. And I know that I want the O and the N, the traditional O and N characters. Now, the rest of the characters that I wanted are actually all of those special characters. And we need to get the Unicode codes for each character and paste them in here. And we do that easily in Font Explorer. So inside Font Explorer, you'll see that along with the other character codes where we got the HTML code, we have a Unicode character. And what we want to do is we want to copy the Unicode character, E1BB. So I'm going to copy that. We're going to go back into Safari, and I'm going to paste that in there. Now what I'm going to want to do is I want to do a comma delimited list of all of the other Unicode characters that I need. So for example, I wanted a fancy T. So here's the T that I wanted to use. I'm gonna copy that Unicode character. Paste that in. And you're gonna do the same thing now for every single special character that you want to subset. So again, verifying that inside single characters, this is where you could just subset easily any letter or standard you know, punctuation here. Okay, and then if you wanted any of those special characters, you're going to put the Unicode character set here, comma delimited. Pretty simple to do. Um, it will might be a little tougher to get to some of this data um, using the out of the box font book app, but utilizing Font Explorer X, as you see, um, it's very easy to uh, get at this information. Now, once you defined all of your uh, fonts, basically you go down and say yes. I am allowed to use these fonts. Um, and then you're going to say, download your kit. And what Font Squirrel is going to be doing is it's actually going to generate all of the font file for you and some other sample CSS and HTML files if you want them. And it's going to download them to your downloads folder as a zip file. So here we have my font kit that I've downloaded from Font Squirrel. And here is the font file that has the subset of the Samantha font that I want. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to load this into Font Pro just so that we can quickly look and verify that this font is exactly what we want. So here I've loaded that font subset into Font Explorer. And if you notice, I still I have in my special character codes and everything is displaying here as I would want. Now as a test, I can go ahead and change this to be Font Pro. And if you see here, it's missing the standard F, the T, the P, and the R. Right. This is because those characters are not included in this subset. So now I could take this font file and load it as a web font inside the font pro you know, stack. So I, the font pro would then pull in this font file from the web and that will work perfectly. However, we're going to go one step farther right now inside rapid weaver in inside font pro you'll notice that there is an inline font stack. Now, traditionally font stacks, you know, web fonts and others are referencing files that we publish online, right? Either they're files on Typekit or Hoffler or they're web fonts that we've added to our server. The inline font stack is a little bit different. Essentially, what we do is we, what's called base64 encode our font file, and then it is embedded directly onto our web page. There is no external file to pull down. The entire file is embedded directly onto the web page. So this means that a lot of times inline fonts will download faster because it doesn't need to reference an external file to be pulled down. Everything is embedded on the page. Now there's obviously benefits and drawbacks from doing this, right? If you're gonna load 
embed an entire 300K font file, not sure that's gonna be the best performance because that's gonna embed 300K onto your web page or into your CSS, right? Instead of loading that as a separate transaction, you know, in terms of the requests. But in this case, we subsetted a font file. So instead of 300K, our font file is 5K or 7K, right? So we have a very much smaller font file that we can then embed onto the page. Now this is gonna be important, so if you have, let's say on page load, I have big font pro, you know, of this fancy type that we've added directly on page load. So that's the first thing that people see. This is where inlining your fonts will see huge improvements, okay? Because that font is gonna be downloaded with the web page. Therefore, the font is going to show up properly immediately. There's going to be no flouk, right? Or flash of unstyled content. Essentially, if we load this as an external file, what would happen is, depending on your internet speed, right? You could see Font Pro as the fallback font before the font file was downloaded so that it could be displayed the way you originally envisioned it. Again, loading externally takes extra time because it's gonna download that file separately. Loading it in line and in basically encoding the font onto the web page will load the font faster and guarantee that you do not have any flauk at all, okay? However, like I said, there are drawbacks. You don't want to be in base 64 inlining a 300K font, okay, on every single web page, okay? It's going to be a lot faster in that instance to simply load that external font, let the browser cache that font, okay? At that point, the browser's cached it, and all subsequent page views, it's just going to be snappy, 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 and there will be none, no flash of unstyled content, right? So you're gonna have to play around with this. Again, this is definitely an advanced topic. This is why this is an advanced video. You have to determine whether or not inlining the font is gonna be worth it for you and your web page. okay? And I highly recommend that you subset that font if you're going to inline it. okay? So now let's jump in and see how we can inline our fonts. I have my font file. How do I create this encoded strings so that we embed it directly onto the uh, web page? Now, there are many ways to do this. There are many different apps to do this, okay? There are some web online web tools that allow you to do this for free. I use an app called Base64 Plus. It's on the Mac App Store. I think it was a whopping $1.99, okay? And it's really simple to use. Simply click on encode. You click choose file, okay? I drag in the file that I want, click open, and voila, there is the base64 string that I need to copy and paste into Rapid Weaver. And inside Rapid Weaver, I'm going to paste this particular base64 string into the corresponding font style here. So you can inline multiple fonts if you want, multiple typefaces. So you can do the bold, the normal, the italic, and the bold italic, okay? In this particular case, I am using a font for a bold header. So I put in the base64 string into the bold font area. And what's great about using inline fonts, another side effect is that it actually works beautifully directly inside edit mode, right? So this is how we can definitely be sure that font pro is working uh, via this, uh, the inline font stack that we're using. Now, in terms of the family name and the label, um, you can really name these whatever you want. I suggest you use the label in terms of what you're gonna use it for. I'm gonna use this for header. Now, for family name, since we're using our own file, you can really name this whatever you want, okay? Um, I named it Samantha because I'm using the Samantha font, right? So you probably wanna name it something to whatever your font is. Um, that way, when you're looking back, you know kind of exactly what font family you're using, okay? Um, 
And other than that, you wanna make sure you wanna apply. Here I'm using a vault for simplicity's sake, but check out our apply video on how to apply uh, your fonts and font styles to your content. And that's basically it, everybody, right? That is how we can inline fonts, uh, how we can subset those fonts, and even use some special glyphs, right? So I covered a lot of t- a lot of stuff here, right? Um, so if you need to go back around and pause and you know watch in slow motion if you need, right? Whatever, so that you can take a grasp of this because we did do a lot inside this video. A lot of, we covered a lot of advanced topics, right? Um, again, I used Font Explorer X. It is a nice app. It's not cheap, it's not inexpensive, right? Um, But it is a quality, really good quality app for font management. Um, You can acquire some of this information from Fontbook, okay, which is um, the font management app that comes with Apple, um, with Mac. And, but Font Explorer makes it so much easier to use, okay? So, accessing special glyphs, okay? Oh, and a lot of times, when you purchase a font from somewhere, a lot of times they come with like a PDF and a document so you can see all that information as well. So after we defined all of the glyphs that we wanted, we went to fontsquirrel.com and created a subset so that because we only wanted the font characters that we needed uh, to display because I didn't want to load a 300K font file. I just wanted to load the seven characters that we really needed, right? Makes sense. Now, we went a step further. Once we downloaded our font file, we could have taken that font file and loaded it using a web font inside Font Pro. However, we went an extra step farther. We base64 encoded that to a string. So basically, we, we turned the file into some characters, a string. Okay, base64 encoded string. Using, I used the base64 plus app that's on the app store, okay? And then we pasted that base64 string into Font Pro. And that's it. We're done, right? So I hope you use this. I hope that uh, it helps you out. I know it is very advanced. Um, and hopefully this helped out. So thank you very much for watching, everybody. I hope you're enjoying Font Pro. Hopefully by now you've probably watched all of the other Font Pro videos. And I hope they helped you out. So take care and have a wonderful day. Bye.